Jean Brady, thank you for having us here from Voices. I'm Jill Gomez, the environmental editor of Voices here in State College. And I'd just like to ask you, why is it that you've invited Mr. Cousteau here to Penn State to, to speak this evening? Great, well thank you for uh, inviting us to speak with you. Um, Mr. Cousteau, of course, is Jean-Michel Cousteau, is the son of the famous Jacques Cousteau, who many of us grew up watching his documentaries about the ocean. And uh, Jean-Michel has carried on his father's work and legacy and uh, his concern for the oceans and sustainability. Uh, in his lecture, our signature lecture series, uh, is, uh, follows on from two conferences that we've co-sponsored this fall on sustainability, one with the Schreier Institute of Teaching Excellence on sustainability and education, and the other with the Rock Ethics Institute, looking at sustainability and ethical implications of climate change. Uh, so Mr. Cousteau's work and having him speak to our, our students is an important part of, of our continuing process here of engaging in dialogue and discussion about what's going on with the world around and, and the human's role within it. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Cousteau. Thank you for meeting with us today. My name is Jill Gomez and I'm the environmental editor of the Voices of Center County, of Center uh, Pennsylvania, which is the uh, alternative progressive newspaper of our area here in Pennsylvania. And I have a few questions to ask you. Um, so take your time and we'll see what we get to. Go we ahead. just have a few minutes. Uh, the first one is between overfishing, global warming and pollution, the degradation of the oceans seems irreversible. Can the oceans be saved? And what can people do as industries or as individuals to reverse the degradation? The, the real question uh, should be, can the human species be saved? Because that's what it's all about. Uh, the ocean is a life support system, and if we mismanage it like we do right now, we're heading toward bankruptcy, and that will affect us. The fish and the birds and the flowers and the roses and the creatures of the planet, they, they don't care. That's not the issue. And we have a tendency to disconnect ourselves from the ocean and kind of say, you know, somebody else. It's our problem. And if we want to maintain the quality of life that we have, we better face up to the decisions that need to be made, and they're not going to be easy. But the alternative is of no interest. And in a brief, the answer is no, it's not too late. Our community here is 200 miles from the nearest sea. Does our behavior here in State College affect the life of the sea? Every human being on the planet is affecting the state of the ocean. That snow that is still high outside there is the ocean. The water that you've been drinking all day long is the ocean. When you're going to go skiing this winter, you're skiing on the ocean. And it goes back into the ocean with everything we put into it. We are in the process of using the ocean as a sewage system. Well, it can take a lot of punishment, and there's a point where too much is too much. We've reached that point. We better uh, act upon what needs to be done so we stop doing this. And it's in our best interest. Nobody else cares. We do. Then what can we do to educate our children to care about the oceans? The beauty of the children uh, is that they are like sponges. Provide them with the right information, it will get into their brain, they will educate their parents when they go home, and when they become the decision makers, they'll make much better decisions than the present decision makers. Just a couple more. Um, would you say there have been any success stories in the last 10 years? There's a lot of success stories, fortunately. And I'm happy to say that uh, amongst other NGOs and certain decision makers in, in industries and governments, we have seen some progress being made. Uh, there are a lot of young people particularly, and many of them we have the uh, honor of uh, being in contact with or uh, teaching. Uh, who are the, the best uh, communicators, they are the best ambassadors to go to those decision makers, whether it's at home or industries and government, to uh, tell their parents that something has to happen. 
And they have ideas because we provide them with ideas on how to recycle, how to limit the use of energy, how to uh, avoid wasting water, and on and on and on. They know those things. We didn't know when we were kids. They do know now. And they are the best uh, uh, communicators that one can think. And who is going to turn down his son or his daughter, her son or her daughter, when they tell you something which makes a lot of sense? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no question you're not arguing with those guys because they're telling the truth. Kids tell the truth. From their hearts. How would you say human populations, uh, or, or how are human populations affected by the killing of endangered ocean species? Well, that's, that, that's not the issue. The issues that we, uh, and I will address that tonight, uh, the issue is that we uh, need to uh, revert to uh, other means of feeding people. We've done it on land a long time ago when we settled down and became farmers and we uh, farm grains and herbivores, not carnivores. We don't farm lions and jaguars. Uh, and uh, those people were doing the, the right thing because the population of the world was increasing. So they were answering the demand. We need to do the same thing with the ocean. And because we use the ocean, as we said earlier, as a sewage system, we need, if I'm an investor, I want to do it where I can control my investment, and I'm going to do it on land. And there are people who are doing that. And you need to farm the right species. And if you're going to go through that process, might as well put it where the demand is. And that is going to happen, and just like uh, uh, you know, we farm certain creatures near the demand, near where the, uh, the population is. We'll do the same thing with different species of marine creatures, whether they are uh, animals and also plants. Um, speaking of this evening, are there other issues you plan to cover in your presentation? Well, we're going to touch, essentially, we're going to touch on the climate change. Mm -hmm. and emphasize the fact that uh, a lot of it has been talked about for the last 20 years. Very little has taken place. Uh, we have a, an opportunity when the world gets together uh, in Copenhagen in December, and uh, hopefully the decision makers will start to make decisions and, and make commitments and stop just addressing the issue and doing nothing like it has happened for a long time. And then I will connect it to the fact that that's not enough. The ocean, our life support system, is in trouble. And there are three issues that I will look at. is the fact that we use it as a sewage system, the fact that we're destroying the coastal habitats, which are critical uh, for reproduction, for the protection, for economical reasons, and finally, uh, the fact that we are emptying the ocean and we need to go from the anarchy of commercial fishing to farming. Okay. I look forward to that this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.